Ready, set, go, ready, set. It's the Ready, Set, Go show. Ready, set, go, ready, set, go. It's the Ready, Set, Go show. Ready, set, go, ready, set. It's the Ready, Set, Go show. Ready, set, go, ready, set, go. It's the Ready, Set, Go show. Everybody now. Ready, set, go, ready, set. It's the Ready, Set, Go show. Ready, set, go, ready, set, go. It's the Ready, Set, Go show. What? Stop. No, go. And now it's time for the Ready, Set, Go show with Miss Katie. Hi, everybody. So glad you could join us today on the Ready, Set, Go show. First, we are going to get our wiggles out with some puddle stomping. This whole show is about rain and the movement activity is about stomping in puddles. Have you ever done that before? Well, if you can, go ahead and stand up so you can stomp along to the song. If you need to sit down right now, then you can clap along with your hands wherever you hear the word stomp. Now, if you have some rain boots, you can put them on if you like. I'll give you a little time to go run and find them. I brought an instrument called a rain stick today. It's long and it's wood with something like beans inside that make it sound like rain. And I'm going to play it so that we get inspired to imagine that there are going to be puddles everywhere, in the yard, on the sidewalk, and even at the end of the driveway. Here's the rain stick. Okay, I think there are a lot of puddles now. So it's officially time to stomp. Find yourself a puddle and stomp, stomp, stomp. Find yourself a puddle and stomp, stomp, stomp. Stomp with your right foot and stomp with your left. Stomp with both feet, cause that's the best. Stomp with your right foot and stomp with your left. Stomp with both feet, cause that's the best. Find yourself a puddle and stomp, stomp, stomp. Find yourself a puddle and stomp, stomp, stomp. Yes, find yourself a puddle and stomp, stomp, stomp. Find yourself a puddle and stomp, stomp, stomp. Stomp with your right foot and stomp with your left. Stomp with both feet, cause that's the best. Stomp with your right foot and stomp with your left. Stomp with both feet, cause that's the best. Find yourself a puddle and stomp, stomp, stomp. Find yourself a puddle and stomp, stomp, stomp. Oh, find yourself a puddle and stomp, stomp, stomp. Find yourself a puddle and stomp, stomp, stomp. Wow, that was a lot of stomping. Now it is time to settle in for a story. Elise, who is seven, asked me to write about a cat and a squirrel. My friends Jim and Byron are going to help with the voices of Augustus and Spencer. But first, the story song. Now sit back, relax, off we go. Sit back and relax, off we go. It's a special time, one of the best times of the day. It's time to listen. Listen to a story. Hooray! The youngest kitten in the cat family, a calico kitten named Augustus, did not like rain, especially the kind of rain that came with thunder and lightning. Whenever Augustus heard rumbling or a crack of thunder, he would grab his favorite food, a kersnuffle puff, in his mouth and run underneath the big blue armchair. Augustus would always stay in his safe place and peer out the back window until he could see that the last raindrops had stopped falling from the sky. Today was one of those dark, stormy days, and Augustus was already curled up under the armchair. It was raining hard, and he was very surprised to see four squirrels running around. They were running up and down trees across the top of the fence and all around the yard. One of the squirrels was smaller than the others, and Augustus decided that he wanted to meet him. All of a sudden, the raindrops stopped falling, so Augustus swished his tail and stretched his body and then each one of his paws. He walked out of his safe place and straight out the back door to the porch, where he found a dry spot on the swing. 
Augustus called out to the squirrel. Hey, I saw you running in the rain. I'm Augustus. What's your name? Hi, I'm Spencer. Hey, Spencer, where do you live? I live at the end of the street in a big old oak tree. Can I come see your place sometime? Sure. Do you want to go on the low road or the high road? The high road is my favorite. There are trees close enough to jump from the branches of one to the next all the way from my treehouse to your yard, except for a couple of places where I run on the rooftops. Let's go on the high road, replied Augustus. Do you want to come over right now? You bet. Spencer showed Augustus how to climb the trees and balance on the branches and then jump from one tree to the next. The new friends started in the pecan tree in Augustus's backyard, then they jumped to the sycamore and tulip trees in Fuzzy's yard. Then they leaped to Hopper's roof and jumped into the peach and apple trees in Zig's yard, and then the maple tree and two river birch trees in Skip's yard. After that, they ran across Doug the dog's roof and hopped into the branches of the biggest oak tree Augustus had ever seen. It was decorated with strings of lights and had ladders leading from one room to another all the way up the tree. Spencer taught Augustus how to climb down the tree trunk, and then they played catch and hopscotch out in the clearing behind the treehouse. Then Augustus heard a rumble of thunder in the distance. Oh no, a storm is coming, he exclaimed. Spencer said, I used to be scared of thunder too, but then my big sister taught me a song that she overheard a mom and dad singing to their kids at the park one day. My sister told me all about how they had this special stuff just for rainy days. Well, of course I didn't have any rain boots or coats or umbrellas, but the song helped me stop feeling scared of the rain. Maybe if you sing it with me, you'll feel better too. Augustus was surprised that they hardly got wet at all. Once the thunder passed, Spencer asked Augustus, do you want to take the low road so we can jump in the puddles all the way back to your house? Augustus said, That sounds like fun. So they sang the rain song while they hopped in the puddles all the way down the street. Rain, 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 please don't rain all day. Rain, 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 I want to run outside and play. So grab your umbrella, pull on your boots, and your raincoat too. Find some puddles, jump, jump, jump. It's a splasherific day for you. Rain, rain, rain. Please fall from the clouds today. Rain, 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 rain. I want to run outside and play. Rain, rain, rain. Please fall from the clouds today. Rain, 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 rain. I want to run outside and play. Augustus invited Spencer inside. Want to try a Kersnuffle Puff? Spencer popped one in his mouth and said, Oh, that is so yummy. It's even better than an acorn. The new friends decided to play again the very next day, no matter whether it was rainy or sunny. As Augustus waved goodbye to Spencer, he said, I had so much fun today that I hope it rains again. The end. So Spencer and Augustus are animals. And most animals live outside all the time and have to figure out how to stay safe during storms. But people need to get inside when they hear thunder. The thunder can sound scary, but really it's a great warning to help us know when to get inside, because lightning is dangerous. So if there isn't any thunder or lightning, being out in the rain can be really fun. But always listen to your parents or whoever is taking care of you to know when it's safe to go out and play in the rain or the puddles. Today, I have a special guest named Jim. He lives in Tulsa, and he loves music and loves to play guitar and mandolin. He even writes his own songs. Hi, Jim. Hi, Miss Katie. How old were you when you started playing guitar? I was probably in the first or second grade. Uh, I think I first actually got my first guitar when I was in third grade. How about the mandolin? I began to play mandolin much later. It it was an instrument that I picked up... uh, because so many of my friends played the guitar, and I wanted to play an instrument that sounded a little different. Oh, that's a good idea. So what made you pick the guitar when there are so many instruments? Well, like I said earlier, a lot of my friends played the guitar, and it was one of the things that we enjoyed sitting around and doing with one another. 
Well, can you describe the guitar for us and show us how it sounds? Sure. The guitar is an instrument, a stringed instrument that has six strings, and uh, you can play it in a lot of different ways. Uh, you can play chords, or you can play individual notes, and you can play a lot of different styles of music. It's a very, uh, one of the things that's nice about the guitar is that it's very versatile, and you can take it with you a lot of places and, and play music uh, when you're outside where there's no electricity. Well, what makes the mandolin different than the guitar? I can see it's a lot smaller, but it looks quite a bit like the guitar, actually. Well, the mandolin was uh, an instrument that was um, developed uh, and became popular in the United States in the early part of our country. There were a lot of people that moved to our country uh, from uh, Europe, and they were used to playing the violin. And so the violin became popular in, in uh, bluegrass and country music. And the, the mandolin is tuned just like the violin. So a lot of people that had a violin would turn it sideways and begin to play it like a, like a guitar with a pick and playing across the strings instead of a bow. So the uh, mandolin became a, a kind of a, a, a way to play the same notes that people would play on a violin or a fiddle, and it became one of the most popular instruments in what's known as bluegrass music. And so uh, we still uh, have a lot of mandolin players today that play it's mainly used in bluegrass music, can, but can be played in a lot of different styles as well. Here's how it sounds. As you can see, it sounds a lot higher. The notes are higher. So if you're playing along with someone that's playing the guitar, the mandolin and the, and the guitar sound very nice together. Well, I know music is really important to you, Jim. And why do you think music is important? Well, I think music is important because it uh, brings happiness to life, uh, both if you perform music and listen to music, there are a lot of uh, situations that I can think of, both weddings and uh, parties, where uh, they just seem like they're a lot more fun because the right music is playing, and it always adds uh, a little something special to life. Well, I agree with that. Can you play a little bit more for us? Sure. Sure. Wow, that's beautiful. Well, thanks so much for being here and bringing your instruments today. Thanks, Miss Kitty. I was glad to come. Now it's time to make the world a better place. I am smart. I am kind. I am good. I'm creative and I'm strong, so I should. Know my words make a difference and my actions too. I'll make the world a better place, that's what I'm going to do. What are you going to do to make the world a better place today, Miss Katie? Well, I'm going to pull an idea out of my sunshine sack so I can think of something really good. Call someone and say hi. Hmm, that's a fun idea. Maybe I'll call my mom. How about you, Jim? Would you like to choose something from the sunshine sack? Sure. Give something away if you aren't using it anymore. Hmm, I think I've got an old microwave oven that I could take to Goodwill. Oh, I bet somebody could use that. Now we're going to think about some outside and inside adventures for the next time it rains where you live. When I'm outside or inside, I think, learn, and grow. When I'm outside or inside, there's so much to know and do and think and play. Yay for today! If you are outside in a light rain or after the rain stops, then you can go jump in some puddles. Or you could dance in the rain. Something else you can do before a rainstorm comes is put out one or more buckets or bowls and then let water collect in them. You could estimate how much water you'll have once the rain stops. An estimate is kind of like a guess. Later on, you could ask an adult to help you measure the water using the kind of cup people use for cooking. It's called a measuring cup. Once everything is dry, you can take a big paintbrush and use the rainwater to paint a fence or a picture on the driveway. You could also pour water into a spray bottle and spritz flowers or bushes on another day when they seem very dry. 
If you collected water, then you can measure it and see how close you came to your estimate. Think about how you can use your water. Could you use it to water plants? Or could you use some of it to clean your brush if you do some painting? You could also paint a picture with watercolors of a part of the story about Augustus and Spencer. You could paint the cat and squirrel jumping in the puddles, Spencer's treehouse, or the two of them leaping from one tree to another. Or you could make a picture of a rainbow in the sky along with clouds. Or just make a whole bunch of big raindrops. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Ready, Set, Go Show. I hope you have a lot of fun, no matter whether it's sunny or rainy where you live today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Thank you for doing all the things that you do. Until the next time, hope you have a lot of fun. Remember to be kind to everyone. Bye-bye. The Ready, Set, Go show is part of the Possibilities podcast platform.